Hello and welcome to We On Live broadcast from New York. I'm Susan Tehrani. These are the top headlines for this hour. Russia says it has taken control of Solidar, a town in eastern Ukraine which has been a hot spot of recent fighting. But Kyiv dismisses Moscow's claim. A cousin of Black Lives Matter founder dies after police arrest. He was repeatedly tasered and restrained by the Los Angeles police. Bankrupt Sri Lanka will drastically slash its military, says its defense ministry, as the government works to overhaul It's a shambolic finances after an unprecedented economic crisis. Germany will end the requirement to wear face masks on long distance trains and buses from February 2nd as the coronavirus pandemic loosens its grip on the country. Authorities on the Indonesian island of Bali rescued 43 endangered green sea turtles during a routine Navy operation where they stumbled across poachers out at sea. A cousin of Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Collars has died hours after he was repeatedly tasered and restrained in the streets by Los Angeles police. The victim, 31-year-old Keenan Anderson, a teacher and a father, later died in hospital. A video footage of the incident has been released by the Los Angeles Police Department, which shows Anderson being held down by the officers as he begs for help. Paramedics later arrived at the scene and took him to hospital, where he reportedly died after suffering a cardiac arrest. According to police officials, Anderson had committed a felony hit and run in a traffic collusion and was trying to flee the scene. Patrice Collars, Anderson's cousin and Black Lives Matter co-founder, while posting his picture on Instagram, has said that the fight for him and all those impacted by state violence will continue. Black Lives Matter is a political and social movement that seeks to highlight racism and discrimination experienced by black people. Its primary concerns are incidents of police brutality and racially motivated violence against black people. The movement gained international attention during the global protest for George Floyd in 2020 following his murder by a Minneapolis police officer. The latest incident comes as the L.A. Police Department has come under criticism in recent years for a rise in police shootings, as well as other high-profile failures. Last week, three black and brown men lost their lives after having an encounter with the department. L.A. Police Chief raised concerns over the deaths and has said that all three deaths are currently under investigation. U.S. President Joe Biden is in a middle of a growing storm over his handling of classified documents hours after the announcement of the discovery of a second batch of secret papers at his private residence. The U.S. Attorney General announced the appointment of a special counsel. The top U.S. law enforcement official Merrick Garland appointed Robert Herr, a former U.S. attorney in Maryland, as special counsel to investigate President Biden's handling of sensitive government documents. Robert Herr is a former Trump-appointed federal prosecutor and a former Justice Department official. 
I strongly believe that the normal processes of this department can handle all investigations with integrity. But under the regulations, the extraordinary circumstances here require the appointment of a special counsel for this matter. This appointment underscores for the public the department's commitment to both independence and accountability in particularly sensitive matters and to making decisions indisputably guided only by the facts and the law. Amid the fur over the discovery of classified documents, President Joe Biden said that his lawyers searched his Delaware home and found a small number of documents marked classified in a locked garage in Wilmington in an adjunct room. He said his lawyers notified the Justice Department immediately and was cooperating fully. People know I take classified documents and classified material seriously. I also said we're cooperating fully and completely with the Justice Department's review. As part of that process, my lawyers reviewed other places where documents in my, uh, of, from my time as vice president were stored and they finished the review last night. They discovered a small number of documents of classified markings and storage areas and file cabinets in my home and my, in my, my, my personal library. The White House has also mounted a defense. They have said that the classified documents found at Biden's former office and private residence were, quote, inadvertently misplaced, and that the president and his lawyers acted promptly upon discovery of this mistake. The president has spoken to, uh, to how seriously he takes uh, the handling of, of classified uh, documents. And... Um, he, as somebody who's aware of the process myself, did exactly the right thing, which is to have them immediately uh, turned over. The first batch of classified documents was discovered a week before last year's midterm elections, but it was only acknowledged by the White House this Monday and made public. The second cache of documents were found in the garage of Biden's home in Wilmington, Delaware. The second set of secret papers, like the first one, is from Biden's time as vice president, accusing the White House of a cover-up. Newly elected House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has said that the U.S. Congress must probe the Biden documents. You look at President um, Biden. He wasn't president. He was vice president. He held these in different locations right out in the open. He criticized President Trump. Did he utilize the Justice Department to raid President Trump? Did you think that was right? They knew this has happened to President Biden before the election, but they kept it a secret from the American public. He goes on 60 Minutes, criticizes President Trump, even knowing what he has done, and he wasn't president at the time. Now we find another location that it's at, but he refused to answer. His press secretary won't answer the questions. The disclosures about the documents are a cause of worry for Biden. He's expected to formally launch a re-election campaign in the coming months. And there are already comparisons drawn between the special counsel investigation of former President Trump's handling of classified material and the current president. Okay, something that the Republicans had promised for a long time if they take over the House. The House Republicans are ready for another blow to the Biden administration. The top Republican on the House Foreign Affairs Committee requested a number of documents related to the chaotic exit of U.S. troops from Afghanistan from the State Department. Texas Republic Michael McCall also gave the State Department a deadline of January 26 to respond. This is according to the American news broadcaster CNN. He also threatened to use the power of subpoena if the department does not follow the request. The Afghanistan withdrawal is just one of the many investigations that the House Republicans plan to unleash on the Biden administration. McCall requested a list of all interagency meetings related to the withdrawal that occurred during the Biden administration. He also seeks information about all the meetings with the Taliban since the year 2021. The State Department conducted its own review of the Afghanistan withdrawal last year 
but the department is yet to release its findings. It has been a month since Netanyahu was elected as the new Prime Minister of Israel, and despite several reassurances by the right-wing government, it seems that the ripples his appointment created are nowhere near settling down anytime soon. In the latest, the Netanyahu government is under attack by the judicial system of Israel. Not just the lawyers, but Israel's top judge has also criticized the government's judicial reform plan in a rare public criticism of the government, the president of Israel's Supreme Court said that the judicial reform proposed by the government and spearheaded by a justice minister will completely crush Israel's judicial system. Take a listen. The plan unveiled by the Justice Minister includes limiting Supreme Court power to rule against government policy or Knesset law, while increasing politicians' say in selecting the bench. Israel Chief Justice minced no words in slamming the proposal and called it, quote, an unbridled attack on the judicial system, something that would undermine the country's democracy. כי הרוב שבחר את נציגיו לכנסת נתן להם בכך צ'ק פתוח לעשות ככל העולה על רוחם נושא את שם הדמוקרטיה לשווא Netanyahu's Justice Minister Yariv Levin has defended the reform he's championing. He has strongly criticized what he referred to as a call to set the streets on fire. Levine said that his plans will restore balance between the branches of government. שמענו הערב רטוריקה מוכרת מהפגנות הדגלים השחורים. זו אותה אג'נדה פוליטית. זו אותה קריאה להבעיר את הרחובות. מיליוני אזרחים, ואני בתוכם, נחושים להשיב את האיזון בין רשויות השלטון ולשקם את האמון במערכת המשפט בישראל. Last week, Netanyahu's Justice Minister presented a highly detailed reform program. He wants to hand more powers to members of parliament in appointing judges. He has also proposed, quote, a derogation clause which will allow parliament to annul some Supreme Court decisions with a simple majority. The proposal has stirred worry within Israel and abroad that it could be used by Netanyahu or his religious nationalist coalition partners to pave the way for laws that might encroach on secular liberals and minorities as well. The U.S. House of Representatives has passed the bill with a big majority banning oil release from the U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve, the country's emergency stockpile, from going to China. The bill was passed with 331 votes in favor and only 97 against in the Republican-controlled House. All of the no votes came from Democrats. The bill, however, faces an uncertain future in the Senate. The issue of U.S. oil exports to China has been a major issue for Republicans since President Joe Biden announced the sale of 180 million barrels from the Strategic Oil Reserves last year to tame rising oil prices due to the Russia-Ukraine war. The months-long sale has brought the stockpile to its lowest level since the 1980s. Republicans have said that selling the reserves to China is a significant threat to our national and energy security. Some Democrats, meanwhile, have commented that the Republicans were trying to fix a problem on their own making, as it was a Republican-led Congress that lifted the ban on crude oil exports. The latest measure is the first in a series of proposals by the Republicans aimed at quote-unquote unleashing 
American energy production. The House also voted overwhelmingly this week to set up a select committee on China to counter Beijing's growing international influence. Speaker Kevin McCarthy said it would address issues such as bringing jobs and supply chains back from China to the United States besides securing intellectual property. China's exports in December fell at their fastest pace since 2020. This is because of a drop in global demand and after the zero COVID policy hit the economic activity in China. According to official data, exports fell 9.9% year on year to $30.6 billion. And this is the second consecutive month of decline. Exports are an important part of China's economy since 2020, when the global shutdown led to strong demand for Chinese goods, such as medical products. And then as the rest of the world reopened, the world's second largest economy is still reeling from the effects of years of its zero COVID policy which hammered businesses and supply chains and dampened consumption. China began lifting most of the hardline measures after anti-policy protests across the country. The uncertainties linked to COVID and the economic slowdown in China are having an impact on the need for foreign products. Imports were down again in December, sinking 7.5%. Both import and exports dropped much more than forecast in a survey of economics by Bloomberg. China's trade in December nevertheless reached $78 billion, but it's still well below July's record, $101.2 billion. China is set to unveil its 2022 economic growth figure. The previous year, gross domestic product grew more than 8%. Amazon has started to lay off staff in India just days after a CEO, Andy Jassy, announced worldwide job cuts. This is according to media reports. Amazon India plans to cut 1% of its workforce. While the job cuts were to begin after January 18th, the e-commerce giant sent emails to affected employees and promised five-month severance pay. Employees were informed of their layoffs by email and were asked to meet the leadership group on a specific date for more clarity on the situation. Many employees laid off took to social media sites like LinkedIn and Twitter looking for new opportunities. The layoffs were across cities in India, including new hires and experienced employees with loss, making teams the most affected globally. Amazon will cut 18,000 jobs as part of its previous announced layoff job plans which comes to about 6% of its workforce. A separate Reuters report last week showed surging job cuts will make 2023 a challenging year for workforce diversity globally. In recent years, big global firms stepped up hiring and made diversity, equity, and inclusion a priority. But deep cost cuts, including layoffs, are risking corporate diversity pledges globally, which took years to take shape. In a rare such move, Apple is cutting Chief Executive Officer Tim Cook's compensation by more than 40% to $49 million in 2023. The reason for pay cut are investor guidance and a request from Cook himself to adjust his pay. Tim Cook's pay package will depend more on how well the iPhone maker's shares perform relative to market peers. As part of the changes, the percentage of stock units awarded to Cook and tied to Apple's performance will also increase to 75% in 2023 from 50% as well as in future year. For 2022, Cook received compensation of $99.4 million, including $3 million in base salary, about $83 million in stock awards, and a bonus. That was up slightly from 2021 when his total pay package was $98.7 million. The changes were made after 64% of shareholders approved Cook's pay package at its annual meeting last year, down from 94.9% the previous year.
And now on to a story that shocked us all earlier today. There has been an attempt to defraud one of the greatest sport persons of all time, the Jamaican Usain Bolt. Millions of dollars have gone missing from Bolt's account with an investment firm in his country. The company in question is Stock and Securities Limited. And an investigation is underway to find out how many millions went missing from the account of the eight-time Olympic champion. Bolt's manager, Nugget Walker, has told the daily newspaper, The Gleaner, that Jamaica's Financial Investigation Division and Financial Service Commission are looking into the case. Stocks and Securities Limited is also understood to have called the police. 36-year-old Bolt noticed what appeared to be discrepancies with his account on Wednesday. His manager, Walker, said the exact sum that went missing can't be disclosed due to the ongoing probe. An employee of the investment firm is said to be implicated in a widespread fraud at the company and may have been involved in the developments surrounding Bolt. The Jamaican is... Musician Lisa Marie Presley and the only daughter of rock and roll legend Elvis Presley has died after she was rushed to hospital late last night. Her mother... Priscilla Presley confirmed the news in a statement, and according to reports, the 54-year-old musician suffered a cardiac arrest while she was at her home in Los Angeles. Tributes started to pour in as soon as Lisa's death was confirmed. Celebrities, including actors Tom Hank and John Travolta, along with musician Pink and Brian Wilson, reacted to Lisa Presley's death with tribute messages written on social media. Tom Hanks wrote, We are heartbroken over the loss of Lisa Marie Presley. Absolutely heartbroken. Tom Hanks co-starred in Elvis, the recently released movie about Presley's father. Born in 1968, Lisa went on to follow in her father's footsteps and started a career in music. Her music career began with a 2003 debut album, To Who It May Concern. It was followed by two more albums, which mostly received positive reviews. The star was also well known for a series of high-profile marriages, This includes her marriage with pop legend Michael Jackson and actor Nicolas Cage. She had four children, including the actress Riley Q and Presley's son Benjamin Q, who killed himself in 2020. Lisa Presley was last seen in public at the recently held Golden Globes Awards in Beverly Hills, where Austin Butler won Best Actor in a Drama Film for his leading role in this year's Elvis. She attended the event with her mother. Musician Lisa Marie Presley has died at the age of 54. Well, that's all from us here in New York City. I'm Susan Tehrani. Thank you so much for staying with us and watching. Have a lovely weekend. I'll see you on Monday. And for now, more news and headlines coming up next on We Are World is War.